Thank you for joining me. I've got another game for you from the Blitz Ch World Chess Championship. This one, we have the actual sitting queen of Blitz Chess, Alexandria Korsenik, lovely lady, is currently the world champion in Blitz Chess. She's also a so three-time world champion at classical chess time control. She was born in 1984, so that'd make her about 38 years old, but yes, she is the sitting queen of Blitz Chess. She even styles herself as the queen of chess, or chess queen. Let's go ahead and get right into the game. We have the Russian Grandmaster, so she's by, from Russia, by the way. She begins with pawn to e4, and we, of course, have pawn to c5 by Lou Malli, the Sicilian defense. Pawn now to c3, which is uh, preparing to go ahead and push this pawn here and replace that pawn with the c-pawn if things go well for a white. We now have knight to f6 by Lu Maoyi. Not a move that I'm a fan, to, fan of. I don't like this move. This is a book move that's played many times, but the reason I don't like this move is because of pawn to e5, as played by the grandmaster. Lu Maoyi is forced to reposition her knight to d5 here. And now we have knight to f3 by the grandmaster. White has a lot more space here and uh, an extra tempo. So that's, that's why I don't like this knight to f6 move being played when the pawn can just kick it. But we'll continue. We now have knight to c6 by Lu Maoyi. These all book moves have been played tens of thousands of times by top grandmasters. We now have bishop to c4 by the Russian Grandmaster, and now knight back to b6. Again, just all book openings. This has been played many tens of thousands of times, and in almost all of those games, the top masters move their bishop back to b3 now. Still targeting f7, which is kind of a weakness for black, so often black will play pawn to c4 here, attacking the bishop. And in all variations, actually many hundreds of games have gone this direction in top master play, but in every one, they always play bishop to c2 now. We have queen to d7 by Lu Maoyi. In the vast majority of masters games, queen to e2 was played here, more than a couple dozen, but instead the grandmaster goes with castles. So we have castles by white, and now Lu Maoyi plays knight captures on e5. We have Knight captures back on e5 by the Grandmaster, and of course, Queen captures e5 by Lu Maoyi. We now have pawn to a4. There was about a dozen games where rook to e1 was played here, attacking the Queen. But of course, as you can see, um, the Russian Grandmaster plays pawn to a4 here, and only two other games went down this line. So we have this exact same line. Happened a couple of times in the past by top grandmasters. In one case, pawn to e6 was played, so just pushing the e pawn up one. In another case, pawn to d5 was played. But in this case, we have a completely different game as Lu Maoyi goes with knight to d5 here. She plays knight to d5. Again, the other games, we had pawn to e6 or we had pawn to d5. This is a brand new game on the master levels, so we'll continue. We now do see rook to e1 by the Russian grandmaster, and Lu Maoyi brings her queen back to c7. We have knight to a3 by the grandmaster, and... Lu Maoyi plays knight to f4, which is not the best move because playing that move, well, uh, pawn to d4 becomes a serious problem to deal with. So she shouldn't have played this move, but this is speed chess, although both players have used very little clock time. So that whole opening was probably fairly well memorized for both of them. They've only used, they still have nearly three minutes on their clock as they started. Uh, anyway, Lu Maoyi does play the strange move knight to f4, but the uh, grandmaster doesn't play the best move in response. She should have played pawn to d4 here, but instead she plays queen to f3. That is not the best way for the grandmaster to play. 
So let's take a look at what she should have done. She should have instead played pawn to d4 here. And then best for black would be pawn to e6. And then knight to b5, attacking black's queen. The queen would be driven back to b8 here. Really unfortunate square. And then the queen should come to f3. Black should go ahead and move the knight back to g6. We have pawn now to d5. Bishop to d6 would be best for black here. And then pawn to h4 would be the best play to play for white. Black should go ahead and capture with knight captures h4. We have queen now to h3 by white. And now knight back to g6. Pawn captures on e6. Pawn captures back on e6 for black. Bishop now captures knight on g6. And now pawn captures back on g6, capturing the bishop. Rook captures with check. And then king to f7. So <laughs> this would obviously totally destroy uh, black's position, but luckily for Lu Maiyi, the grandmaster did not see this deep line and played queen to f3. We'll go back to what actually happened on the board now. So a little bit of a weaker move, but we'll go ahead and continue. We now have pawn to d5 by Lu Maiyi. Pawn to d5 is not the best move, saying it's a blunder, but if the pawn was still back here, um, the computer saying the best move is actually to play knight here, attacking the rook, attacking the bishop. And of course, best would be to capture for white and black could capture back, but the queen would capture back and Lu Mal Yi would end up losing a pawn. So again, this is pr probably part of the reason why this move uh, knight to f4 was so bad. It's just you're going to lose material here. So anyway, we will continue with what actually happened on the chessboard. So Lu Mal Yi does play bond pawn to d5. And now we have the best move for the Grand Master now playing pawn to d4. Lu Yi now does move her knight to d3. No way to really salvage this. And we have bishop captures knight now by the Grand Master. And of course, pawn captures bishop. Got to regain your material. But now queen actually captures on d5 by the Grand Master. Would have been actually better to play knight to b5 here. Oh, I forgot to mention, a moment ago, Lu Mal Yi went under one minute on her clock. So he has less than a minute on her clock when everything turned red there. Uh, the four red squares meant that she was under a minute on her clock. Uh, best move here would actually been to play knight to b5, attacking the queen right away. But we'll go ahead and continue with what actually happened on the chessboard. Lu Mal Yi now plays pawn attacks queen, pawn e6. And now we do see the best move in the position, knight to b5 by the Russian Grandmaster. And Lu Yi actually takes a lot of time on her clock. She has 51 seconds when she starts thinking about this move. But when she decides on the actual move, she's down to just 17 seconds on her clock. And this wasn't the best move. So she spent quite a bit of time to think about this. She actually should have moved over here and maybe offered the queen trade. But again, we'll just go ahead and continue with what happened on the chessboard. We have queen back to f3 by the grand master perhaps looking just to go ahead and win this pawn although it would have been better to actually play queen back this direction queen to c4 instead to go after the pawn but we'll continue we have bishop to d6 by lu Yi, just offering a trade of the bishop for the knight the grand master does go ahead and grab the knight and of course lu Yi captures back as that is a checking move she's got to get out of check may as well capture the knight of course and now the queen does capture the d3 pawn no way we we're going to hold on to that pawn for lu Yi, and we'll continue we now have castles for lu Yi, best possible move in the position and now queen to e4 by the grand master lu Yi down to just tens of seconds plays bishop to d7 and now we have bishop to f4 by the grandmaster attacking lu Yi's queen actually would have been better just to go ahead and grab the pawn here but uh again you know these ladies don't have a ton of time to think about what is the best move although the grandmaster still has well over a minute more than a minute more than lu Yi has lu Yi now moves her queen to defend the pawn 
We have queen to b6 by her, and now queen back to c2 by the grandmaster, best possible move in the position. Lu Maoyi plays pawn to a5 here. Would have been better to actually bring the rook from the f file to c8. That would have been a stronger way to play, but we'll continue with what happened on the board. We now have rook lift to e3 by the grandmaster, and Lu Maoyi lines her bishop up with the, the g2 pawn, bishop to c6 here. Definitely a good way to go. And now rook to h3 by the grandmaster, targeting h7. They're threatening checkmate right here and now. Lu Maoyi plays pawn to f5, blocking the queen's access to the h7 square. And now we have rook back to e3 by the grandmaster. Better move actually would have been bishop to e6, says Stockfish. Kind of a nice little outpost there, keeping this guy locked down as a backward pawn. But we'll continue. We now have rook lifts to f6 by Lu Maoyi. Seems to make some sense, activating that rook. And now pawn to f3 by the grandmaster. And Stockfish actually recommends throwing up the h-pawn to h4, just starting some sort of attack over there. We'll go ahead and continue, though, with what happened on the board. We now have rook to g6 by Lu Maoyi, targeting the g2 pawn once again. Maybe someday the bishop and the, the rook can work together on that. Hoping for something to slide their, her way is Lu Maoyi. And, and now the Blitz World Champion plays Rook to E1. So Rook A E1. And I say Rook, the Blitz World Champion. She is the World Champion of 2021. She won last year. Lu Maoyi now pulls her Rook over to E8. So we have Rook to E8 by Lu Maoyi. And now Pawn to A4 by the Grand Master. So... Now seeing kind of what Stockfish was thinking for her a few moves ago. Lu Maoyi plays pawn to h5, stopping that pawn's advance. Although it would have been better just to move the pawn probably to h6 as it would have been easier to defend. This is an okay move in the position. We have the best move by the Grandmaster now, bishop to g5. Just kind of locking that rook out of the position. And now we have bishop to d5 by Lu Maoyi. Definitely a solid move in the position. Rook to e5 by the grandmaster. And now bishop attacks queen with bishop to b3. The queen's got a move. And she goes over to f2. Lu Maoyi grabs the pawn on a4. So we have bishop captures a4, best move in the position. And now we have pawn to d4 by the grandmaster. And Lu Maoyi just 10 seconds on her clock and the grandmaster 32 seconds. Lu Maoyi then plays bishop to b3. This is actually a blunder, a big mistake. The grandmaster now plays her next move. And Lu Maoyi resigns the game. So maybe pause your video for a second and see if you can find the move that the Grandmaster played. So maybe you spotted it super easily, it's like some of you may have. But uh, hopefully you've paused the video if you wanted to find it. But yeah, Lu Maoyi hung her queen here. So just simply queen captures b6. Lu Maoyi's got almost no time on her clock. She just lost her queen, so she does resign the game. And Alexandra Kustinik the 2021 world champion does beat Lu Maoyi in round three. This is round three of the World Blitz tournament. Um, I covered round one and round two games of Lu Maoyi's in previous videos, so maybe check those out. And I will be covering all of the Blitz tournament games that Lu Maoyi played. Anyway, thank you for joining me for that. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, you can't win all the games, especially against this seasoned veteran. I mean, she has been a chess world champion since before Lu Maoyi was born. So she's got a lot of experience over the board. And Blitz Chess is a different ball game. I think if it came down to it and Lu Maoyi and this world champion played a match of classical chess time controls, I think it would be a lot more even um, and interesting. Anyway, 
that's uh, that's it for this one. Thank you for joining me. Please like and subscribe. And thank you for those who did subscribe. I did make a thousand subscribers, so that's awesome. But I would like to continue that trend. I do teach group and individual chess classes online, so you can check that out going through P Patreon. But anyway, thank you for joining me. Take care, everybody.